I challenge you to a duel. It's the only argument I need! I don't want to talk to you no more, you... You got a lot of nerve. Soon you will know what it is like to be defeated. Stop defending him, Sean! All right, let's go. Hey everybody and welcome into the Sleep A Wire Great Debate Show. I am your host, Professor Chris, and with me today, you know him and you love him, I got Prophet Hoos back on the show. How's it going, man? What's going on, Chris? Thanks for having me back on. It's great to be on the debates. It's awesome to dig into this stuff and find out things that you, you know, you normally just wouldn't be, you know, digging in that much into a particular player. So, hey, that's why, fun. that's why it's my favorite show, man. Love it. Yep. yep. Absolutely. That's why I created it. That's why I host it. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's good to be here. <laughs> All right, guys. Sorry we did not get a great debate out last week, um, but. One of the players we were going to talk about last week is actually going to be in this week's great debate for uh, for a reason that we will talk about. Um, before we talk about the players, though, announce those ones. For those of you listening for the first time, we are having a debate-style argument between these two players. We each get two minutes to argue for our player and 90 seconds for a rebuttal against the other guy's player. And then we finish it up with final thoughts. And these are unbiased, objective, and stats-based arguments for and against these guys. If you like what you hear, please go to iTunes or Google Play and drop us a five-star rating. Leave us a nice review. It truly does help out the show. And we're going to go ahead and jump into it. So we are doing tight ends for the first time this season. So we've really done wide receivers. for. We did that for the first four weeks. Uh, we haven't been able to do running backs yet. Kind of a shame, but you know what? We haven't really had like that one week where two running backs on the waivers were, you know, the way to go. You know? Yeah, it it, it didn't feel like that. I, I guess. I mean, I'm sure there were some, you know, but and there are some, I suppose. But yeah, certainly not the sexiest. Not that these are the sexiest names because they're not, you know. But tight ends are a little bit more. You know, I don't want to say necessary, but you're drafting your running backs early usually. So hopefully we help you out with these tight ends because they're it's, it's an icky situation out there. But not that these are the greatest, but <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna help you navigate through. You know, help you. Well, maybe I mean, get something else. The best we had for running backs uh, that we could come up with was Adrian Peterson versus Ronald Jones, but we yeah. like you know talking about players who are less than 50% owned on the great debate guys who are, you know, more available than not AP 63% owned Ronald Jones is 61% owned. So that didn't really yeah. fit the criteria of the great debate. So sorry, we haven't done running backs yet, but there just really <laughs> hasn't been that one week where, you know, there was just those two guys and, Oh, who do I pick up? I'm not sure who do I put the waiver claim in. I'm not sure. Hasn't happened yet. Maybe next week though. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm sure we'll, we'll be digging for it. I, you know what? We'll try. <laughs> we'll try. As we said, we are doing tight ends this week. We have Jack Doyle versus Darren Fells. And, uh, you know, maybe not the sexiest names, but, you know, we do have a good reason why we're talking about these guys. And I'm actually going to uh, talk about the in, in my argument. I have Jack Doyle, and I'm going to try to be as unbiased as possible. I am a Colts fan, but I think I'm going to take the homerism out of it. And Hoos has Darren Fells and Hoos. You're going to kick it off for us, right? Yes, sir. I'm going to go with Darren Fells. And like you said, it's not the sexiest names. We've been trying to, you know, <laughs> actually, some of you guys said Darren Fells, who? Uh, Darren <laughs> Fells, he's 33 years old, right? Yeah. It's, he's on his fourth NFL team. But, guys, he's it's, it's just his fifth year in the league. So he hasn't taken a beat in the NFL like some of the guys his age. He's played college basketball at the University of College uh, of California Irvine instead of playing college fo football. So a little different start, you know. Before he started in his NFL career as a walk-on, he played professional basketball in several countries, uh, and then he was signed by the Seahawks. He also played for their the Cardinals, the Lions, the Browns. So yeah, 
he's a little bit of a journeyman. I know Chris was probably going to bring that up in his argument. Um, but he's seen a snap count increase each week. Uh, he saw a, 66, uh, a 64 last week. Uh, I'm sorry, in, in, in a week three, where he went six for his five, 49 yards, and a touchdown. 83% catch rate. Jordan Atkins went three for 73. He did catch two touchdowns that game. So Watson is definitely utilizing the tight end heavily this year so far. Uh, 64% week four. He only had one target and one catch that game. 100% catch rate, though, right? It's nice. Uh, but Jordan Atkins also saw three targets that game. So, again, he's, you know, this is less about Jordan Atkins, but the fact that Watkins is u- utilizing the tight end. Uh, and week five, 79% uh, of, of the snaps. Uh, and he saw two targets for 20 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, so, again, he's he's seeing that red zone area. Uh uh, th- so far, I mean, he, he, he's got three touchdowns um, on the season. He's tied with with um, Hooper and, uh, and and Mark Andrews for second most touchdowns on the season. Uh, he's averaging nine points per game on the season earlier, you know, stinkers included. Uh, so, yeah, he's finished at least six best just this week, actually. Uh, and it's his third game, his third game of the season where he's posted double digits. Um, so that's nice. You know, like you, you don't really get that from a tight end that you're just plucking up off off the waiver, you know, off the waivers. Uh, he's got Denver week 14 who can't defend any. All right. So let me read you some numbers here. Six targets and five receptions for a touchdown. Seven targets for six catches. Sounds great, right? Those are a couple of Darren Fell's stat lines for this season. Let me also read you some others. One target for zero catches, three targets for one catch, one target for one catch, two targets for two catches. That's pretty horrible. He happened to get into the end zone twice with both of those catches in that last game I mentioned, but come on. Darren Fells had 10 career touchdowns in five seasons with three different teams before this season. He averaged two touchdowns a season. His receptions per season during his first five years are 5, 21, 14, 17, and 11. With the last three seasons all being 177 receiving yards or below. Maybe this is a product of him getting more snaps due to not being behind Eric Ebron in Detroit or David Njoku in Cleveland, but he's also got to compete with Jordan Akins, who has 15 catches for 196 yards and two touchdowns. They are basically the same player. We have 18 targets and 13 catches for Akins, 20 and 15 for Fells, two touchdowns for Akins, three touchdowns for Fells. This is a two tight end team. And, you know, I know you can say the same for Doyle and Ebron, which I'm sure Ebron is going to get brought up in your rebuttal. But Doyle has a great history with Jacoby Brissett. Neither of these guys, either Akins or Darren Fells, have this great history with Deshaun Watson. Maybe they'll develop it this year, but they don't have it up until this point. So moving to Jack Doyle here. Over the course of the first five games, uh, Jack Doyle is sitting at 14 catches on 20 targets, including 11 targets and 7 catches and a touchdown over the last two weeks. He has a 70% catch percentage and is someone that Jacoby Brissett has historically loved throwing the ball to. He had three receptions on three targets in week five, but he would have had five catches on five targets if it weren't for two caught balls that were called back on penalties. One of those would have been for a big game. He's someone who has the trust of his quarterback because he's a safety blanket in scramble situations. The Colts also believe that he's one of their best receiving options because when the Colts were up by six with less than two minutes to go and the Chiefs had to do an onside kick, this is when they played the Chiefs in that Sunday night game, guess who they lined up behind the blockers to catch the football? That's right. It was Jack Doyle. It wasn't T.Y. Hilton. It wasn't. Uh, Naheem Hines or Chester Rogers or Zach Pascal. It was Eric Ebron. Thank or Eric Ebron. Sorry, it was Jack Doyle. He fielded the ball cleanly and dropped to the ground, and the Colts got to go into victory formation since he came down with the ball. Jack Doyle is a he, you know a low end tight end two on the season right now, but that's going to go up. There are guys in front of him who he's going to surpass. James O'Shaughnessy, T.J. Hawkinson due to the injury, even though he is back. Uh, Jordan Akins, probably Darren Fells, who only caught two passes. They just happened to be touchdowns uh, in Week 5. Deshaun Watson has favored a different tight end each week. And here's why I think Doyle's usage is going to increase. Actually, I guess I got two reasons. First, 
Back in 2017, his first full season with Jacoby Brissett, Jack Doyle caught 80 passes on 108 targets. And those 80 passes, those 80 receptions, were second only to Travis Kelsey. Yeah, that's more than Zach Ertz, more than Gronk, more than Evan Engram, and he finishes the tight end eight that season in PPR. It was a great season for Jack Doyle. And that's showing you that Brissett knows he can trust Doyle because he's done it in the past. Now I said there's another reason, and that's actually Eric Ebron. Yeah, okay, Jack Doyle, you put up some very solid, sound arguments. You know, they made a lot of sense, very convincing. But one thing is, the numbers do not lie. And Jack Doyle, just like you said, I mean, he is a, a like a, a tier. I, I mean, come on, you can't even do it by tiers. The tight end one is not even a tight end one anymore. If you're not the tight end one, two, or maybe three, and that's like Andrews Waller, uh, and and uh, I'm spacing on 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 obviously the, the you know the other the one it's Kelsey uh, Kelsey uh, Hurts Kittle. yeah D- Disley is is gone. Um, you know who actually I'm going to bring up in you know my my closing arguments for 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 um for for fells but yeah doyle he he doesn't has he doesn't have the numbers yeah he has the rapport with his tight end that's great i mean sorry with with his quarterback that that's great but the numbers just are not there as as far as the splitting with with ebron ebron seems to be catching the touchdowns i mean he, he might be on the field uh and you know it's it's just not a situation that you want to rely on at the point of just at you're counting on numbers you know, at the end of the day, you're, you're going back and you're looking at numbers and J- Jack Doyle just hasn't been someone you've been able to count on this season. Sure. In past seasons, it's he, you've been able. Before we move into final thoughts, today's show is sponsored by the memorabilia site, pristineauction.com. They have hundreds of new auctions every single day. Everything is JSA certified. So, you know, what you are getting is authentic. It's free to join and free to bid. And you only pay when you win. When you sign up right now, enter promo code SLEEPERWIRE, and that's going to get you 5 bucks off your first purchase. Visit pristineauction.com today. That is P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E auction.com. Let's move into final thoughts. Hoos, take us back to Darren Fells. All right, so picking up where I left off with Darren Fells, the guy is quietly a top 10 tight end right now. With no huge blow-up games uh, to skew his numbers, I bet he remains that f- uh, for the rest of the season, especially with Will's, with with uh, Will Disley gone down for the year, um, and you know other teams just trying to figure out their tight end situation. Again, you know he averaged about nine points a game with the early stinkers. That's week one and week two, while they were trying to figure out their offense. Uh, he's finished as a tight end six, you know, this week. Uh, and, and again, he posted, you know, his three double digit, uh, games. So that's, that, that's nothing to, you know, to, to stick, you know, to put up your nose at, uh, he, this past week he had seven targets, six for 69, 85% catch rate. You know, he didn't catch a touchdown, but Watson only threw one that game, which was to the short target area, which would like Duke Johnson, you know, caught the touchdown, but it, Again, that's that's kind of Darren Fell's area. He, you know, Watson clearly loves the tight end this year. He's thrown five touchdowns towards him. Uh, again, he's got Denver week fourteen, who can't defend the tight end. He's got week uh, fifteen. He's got Tennessee, who's sixth worst among defending tight ends. And then he's got Tampa, who's second worst among uh, uh, defending tight ends in your championship game. So if he starts to prove what I'm telling you during the season, you're going to feel very, very, very confident starting him in those games. And he could be a potential championship winner tight end for you. Um, now, again, he's a top 10 right now. You know, again, you know, we talked about the tiers of tight ends. I would put him in the tier three right now, even though he's a top 10, because you've got those top three. You got, you know, four through six or seven or whatever, and then you got your top tens who's averaging nine points. Doyle is not in that category. He's in, like, tight end seven, whatever, tier or whatever. He's just not there. He's not putting up the numbers. 
So at the end of the day, we want to win fantasy championships. And this guy, Darren Fells, he's got the schedule to do it. Taking it back to Jack Doyle here. As I was saying about Eric Ebron, he had a great 2018 season, finishing as a tight end four in PPR leagues. But guess what? That was with Andrew Luck and with an injured and mostly not playing Jack Doyle. Now that Doyle is back, Ebron is struggling. You know how? Eric Ebron is the league leader in dropped passes. He's got four drops through the first five weeks. And now we're six weeks in, but the Colts are on a bye this week. Four drops in five games. He's on pace for 13 drops on the season, which is ridiculous. The most last season was 11. The most in 2017 was eight. Eric Ebron is said to have more drops than other players in the NFL in years. Is he a big target in the red zone? Sure, he's a big body. Can he make plays? Sure, he had 14 total touchdowns last season. But if the drops continue... It's going to be a big issue for this offense, and there's only so much trust a quarterback can put in his receivers before he starts looking elsewhere more often. And, you know, before he, as in Jacoby Brissett, starts looking at his tight end who he knows he can rely on, and that is Jack Doyle. Doyle also has favorable tight end matchups coming up against uh, Houston, Denver, and Pittsburgh. And you've also got bye weeks that are hitting. And some, you know, big-name tight ends that are going to be on buys. Week 7, uh, well, David Njoku for the Browns, but uh, so he's been out on IR. But Ricky Seals-Jones, who's been getting some action. Vance McDonald, O.J. Howard, Greg Olson. These are all, you know, e- either starting tight ends or fringe starting tight ends. They're on by. Week 8 is Jason Witten and Mark Andrews. Week 9, it's Austin Hooper and Gerald Everett. Jack Doyle could very well be a guy who you'll want to stream in the next few weeks. All right, guys, that is going to wrap it up for this episode of The Great Debate. Please follow us on Twitter at SleeperWire Show. Hoos is on there at SleeperWire Hoos. I'm on there at Prof underscore Chris SW. And follow us on the Sleeper app at Prof at Hoos and Professor Chris. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll catch you next time.